Uh, Councilman Garvin, would you do us the honor of the invocation? Yes, sir. Please stand. Well, Father in heaven, creator of all things, we thank you for this opportunity to work for the Cherokee people. We thank you for each one that's represented here tonight. Father, I want to pray for our military personnel scattered throughout the world and their families here stateside. I pray for the council as they make decisions tonight. May your Holy Spirit lead us and guide us. Forgive us for our sins. Pray that all things will be done decently and in order. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Mr. Garvin. Bridget Roll Call. Here. Will Tom Baker? Here. Jack Baker? Here. Harley Bowser? Here. Bradley Cobb? Oh, honey. Joe Crittenden? Here. Harry Fraley? Here. Janelle Fulbright? Here. Don Garvin? Honey. Cotton Jr.? Here. Hannah Glory Jordan? Present. Curtis Snell? Here. Chris Stubbs? Here. David Thornton? Present. Carrie Tynwan? Oh, honey. You have a quorum. We have a quorum. Next order of business is approval of the March 14 regular session minutes. So moved. Second. Moved and second. Discussion on the minutes. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Uh, minutes stand approved as written. Uh, next we have uh, Principal Chief Chad Smith with the State of the Nation. <laughs> I told him to make it brief. <laughs> He's coming. Does he come in? <laughs> we'll move on until he can get here. Move on to committee report. Uh, there are no unfinished business, so we'll move on to committee reports. First one is Housing Authority. Oh, there you are. <laughs> come on in. I told him I told you to make it brief. <laughs> I thought I'd come in stage right. Good evening. It's my opportunity and pleasure to appear in front of you for the State of the Nation this April 11th, 2011. It's been our honor and custom at this time. We remember those who have passed from this life this last month. So let us begin by recognizing our family, friends, and their family members who have passed on this past month. And we will share a moment in silence in their memory and a prayer in our heart to remember their families to, to deal with the losses. Jewel Gibson, mother of Dale Gibson and mother-in-law of Emma Gibson. Claude Dry, family member to numerous Cherokee Nation employees. Lena Nicole Bird Noisewater. Clifford Mouse, brother to Robert and Marvin Mouse. Claude Bear Daughtery Jr., relative of many Cherokee Nation employees. Stephen Holt, son of Buddy Holt. Al Whitley of Washington State, founding member of the Fort Hood Cherokee Satellite Group out of Portland, Oregon. Sam Nofire, family member of Euphema John. Randy Crow, son of Bodie Crow and brother of Brian Crow. Emma Farmer, Junior Beaver of Mays County, and Meredith Houston. And then we lost one of our own council members this last month, Johnny Keener, former Cherokee Nation Tribal Council member from Mays County. We were honored to present the Keener family with the Cherokee Nation flag, our token of honor to our public officials in recognition of Johnny's many years of service to our nation. So if you will, at this time, share with me a moment of silence. Well, 
It is also our custom and honor to recognize the strength of our nation, our veterans who have contributed so much and sacrificed so much. In tonight's uh, honoring, we have a family of four Cherokee veterans, the Holton family. Since we have a family of veterans, I'll ask them to come up all at the same time after I read their accomplishments. James Holton is the son of the late Denver David Holton, who distinguished himself in the Air Force during World War II as a tail gunner. James Holton was born in Stillwater and attended school in Midwest City. In 1964, he joined the Navy where he served until his honorable discharge in 1968. He later attended Central State University on the GI Bill. While in the Navy, James completed Sonar School and was assigned to the crew of the William H. Stanley, which toured the Caribbean, the North Atlantic, uh, North Atlantic, and the Mediterranean Seas. After leaving the Navy, James continued his career in civil service as an air traffic controller and later as a rural mail, rural mail carrier for many years. James is now retired, and his wife of 42 years, Anna, live in Choctaw, Oklahoma. Jeanette Holton King. She is David's sister. Jeanette was born in Tulsa and raised in Midwest City. Jeanette enlisted in the United States Army in 1975. She was educated in Morse Code and FM Communications and served as, served as a field radio operator in Germany and other locations. She was honored in her non-commissioner officer's training course and participated in the FM retransmission mission involving six nations. She received an honorable discharge in 1978. In 2003, once again, she served with the Army as a civilian. Jeanette worked with the soldiers of the 10th Mountain Division until March of 2010. Currently, Jeanette is employed at the Claremore Indian Hospital in the Contract Health Services Department. Lynette Holton Lawrence. Jeanette and David's sister, Lynette Holton Lawrence, was also born in Tulsa. She graduated from Midwest City and attended Oklahoma City College of Nursing. Upon graduation in 1979, Lynette joined the Air Force as a second lieutenant in the Nurse Corps. Lynette remained on active duty as an operating nurse for seven years and then went into the Air Force Reserves for another seven years. During her military service, she received the commendation twice for outstanding service to her country. Her years in service took her throughout the United States and overseas. She, re received, she achieved the rank of captain before for being honorably discharged in 1991. In her civilian life, Lynette served as a nurse case manager for the Army at Fort Drum, New York, in the Army Wounded Warrior Program. She assisted soldiers returning from the Iraq and Afghanistan theater. She received the Civilian Achievement Medal and was recognized twice for her compassionate interventions for soldiers under her care. Lynette currently works for Claremore Indian Health Service in the uh, contract Health Department as a case nurse case manager. Kimberly Tara Riddle. Uh, excuse me. You're not part of this family, are you? Yes. Wow, well, there's a different name. I'm sorry. <laughs> Holton Riddle, excuse me. Kimberly Tara Riddle is Jeanette's daughter, and her father was a late Keith William King. She grew up in Arlington, Texas. In 2002, Kimberly enlisted in the Army and underwent training in Missouri. Kimberly served for six years in the Army with the 10th Mountain, Mountain Division at Fort Drum. She was deployed to Afghanistan for 15 months where she earned the Combat Action Badge for Direct Small Arms Fire and the Afghanistan Campaign Medal. Kimberly Riddle was honorably discharged from the Army in 2008 at the rank of Sergeant. Kimberly further returned service to her country in March of 2008 through August 2009, the New York National Guard as a sergeant at Fort Drum. Kimberly now resides in Clay Corner, Kansas with her husband David and their two children. She's attending college, college pursuing a degree in psychology. And we asked our Deputy Principal Chief Joe Grayson, Jr. to come forward and present these medals as he is a decorated Vietnam veteran himself. So the Holton family, would you come down forward and let us recognize you?
Can somebody volunteer to take her pictures for her if you wanted it? Hate lawyer. Let Travis do it. proud too and uh, when I was in Fort Drum upstate New York taking care of those wounded warriors that that was a real privilege a very big privilege so I'm, I'm very humble thank you so much Speeches, but I just want to say thank you very much, and this is very moving to me. I appreciate it. In programs and service updates, uh, the Cherokee Nation's good credit. Rating was reaffirmed by the Fitch Ratings Company recently as a triple B rating, which is an industrial, is an institutional grade rating. The value of that, it means that uh, our credit is good, and when we go to borrow monies for such projects as our clinics and such, 
we can get the most competitive rates. The report praised the Cherokee Nation for having careful and conservative governmental financial management and for our ability to manage any cash flow issues. Finch also com uh, commended the Cherokee Nation for keeping ample general fund reserves. Like other governments, we have to watch every penny. It is also good to have an internationally known agency as Finch to express confidence in our financial management systems. Redbird Smith Health Center just completed a remodeling project. Part of the construction uh, provides for a pharmacy that includes a robotic system to help fill the prescriptions more quickly, reducing patient waiting time and ensuring accuracy. That system is in place at Hastings. A central automated pharmacy is also under construction at Three Rivers Health Center. It will fill prescriptions for all Cherokee Nation health centers. Uh, a mail order pharmacy is in, being implemented with the automated system. In general announcements this week, the Cherokee Nation will present its annual funding to public schools. The funds are generated through our motor fuel, motor vehicle tax law, which sometimes we call to the tag sales. Oklahoma schools will receive more than $2.7 million this year. I hope everybody will be able to join us to celebrate the grand opening of the new dental clinic at the Mos Salina Clinic on April uh, Thursday, 28th. This construction project provides nearly 4,000 feet of dental space, a community space of, of 2,000 square feet, and a renovation of 1,700 square feet for behavioral health and public health educator space. Congratulations to the Cherokee Nation Volunteers Income Tax Assistance Program. They're coming to the end of the tax season, and so far they've served nearly 2,000 people. And Sandy Long is one of those, and she's always been so diligent. The Cherokee Nation's Environmental Service Group is celebrating Earth Day by working with the city of Tahlequah and Save the Illinois River Group and other volunteers to clean up Town Branch Creek here in Tahlequah. They will do this on Thursday, April 21st. The work will start at 9 o'clock and end in a cookout at Feltz Park at noon. Everyone is in, invited to join the cleanup. And congratulations to our speaker, Meredith Fraley, who was named the Oklahoma National Guard's Legislator of the Year. Let's give her a round of applause. So with that, uh, Madam Speaker, I stand down. Business there being none tended, we move on to um, Mr. David Southern at the Housing Authority report. Thank you, Mr. David. Housing Authority board meeting for April uh, was canceled. We were one commissioner shy. Uh, we do have a couple of folks identified uh, that will be considered uh, once uh, the chief makes that consideration, and he'll forward those on to the council for approval. Uh, it's getting close to uh, time to submit the, uh, this year's Indian Housing Plan. Uh, I mentioned that tonight because it's going to be a little different this year. Uh, Mr. Jones will be preparing, he's in the process of preparing the 2011 and 2012 Indian Housing Plans. Uh, he will be presenting those to councils in the very near future. He'll be presenting the two plans, uh, which obviously will cause some confusion because we always just one year uh, plan, a new plan each year. Uh, we have to approve the 2011 Indian Housing Plan in order to receive those funds. Uh, that plan is due by July the 1st. Uh, this will be in the same format that it has for the last several years. Uh, but on July the 18th, there's a 2012 plan that's due. It's new. Uh, it'll be the first plan to where tribes roll all of their outstanding uh, plans into one year. So instead of having three or four open plans, we'll just have one. Uh, like I said, it is a new format, so uh, we're all uh, getting some new lessons on that from Marvin. Uh, I think the format's much easier to work with. Instead of having several open grants, we'll just have the one. Uh, it seems redundant to have the two plans, uh, but at the same time, that's what HUD says you've got to do. The new plan really doesn't start till, uh, or it's not due until July the 18th, so we've got to get the other one in so we'll reserve that money for us. Uh, like I said, I just wanted to present that tonight because uh, at some point 
There'll be plans sent over, and you'll get two, and you'll say, why am I getting two? So hopefully I can, uh, we can avoid some confusion. But if you have any questions, you can contact Marvin Jones. If you don't know his phone number, <laughs> I'll be happy. If you call me, I'll be happy to get in touch with him. Uh, that's my report for the evening. Uh, if you have any questions, I sure be trying Questions or comments yes, for Mr. Sutherland? You did. Thank you. Next, the Church and Nation Business Report by David Stewart. <coughs> evening, David. Good evening. I'm pleased to say that uh, January uh, was a good month financially. Uh, we're about 10% ahead of last year, uh, so we're seeing some signs of recovery from the recession. And we expect that to continue. Uh, C&B uh, as a whole was up. C&E uh, was up over last year. C&I has uh, a slight dip in its backlog, so we're working aggressively to try to uh, recover from that. The board actions for last month uh, include the approval of the Ramona and Fort Gibson Casino expansions. Uh, we'll recreate, create between 150 and 200 jobs, uh, so we expect that in 2000. Uh, and 12. The site work for Tahlequah and also site work for the collapsed casino number three at Hard Rock was approved, so we will uh, start that work uh, immediately. And I'm pleased to say on the casino we did have uh, insurance for not only property but also the loss of income that might occur until we rebuild. So I'll have to commend uh, our legal department for uh, uh, for uh, handling that. Uh, it's going to prove to uh, to be a wise decision. Uh, we completed the lease purchase of the building in prior for the move of the telecom division at CNI. We expect that to be accomplished by July 15th. Uh, so that would conclude my report. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Yeah, David. Uh, Ramona and Fort Gibson, are those only two that you bid out? No, we bid out, all, I believe, all of the casinos construction. Okay, and who was low bidder? I don't, I'm not sure that's been decided yet. I'm not, I'm not sure if it's been awarded. But who was low bidder? I don't know. You bid them out. You don't know who the low bidder was. I'd have to check with who does that. I, I haven't been intimately involved in that. Can you get that for us? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, Ms. Fishinghoff. You know, David, last month when you wasn't here, I requested a hard copy of your succession plan, and I haven't received it as of yet. Okay, I'll get that for you. We do have it. I'll make sure that gets to you. Okay, and okay. about uh, CNI leased from Cherokee Nation, the Safeway building you was talking about, the old Safeway building here in Tahlequah? Yes. And you're, by July the 15th, the jobs will be moved to May County? Well, we're shooting for that. We signed the lease effective April 15th. So we have to get the building ready. Uh, and there's some, uh, some accommodation that we need to make in the building, uh, move all of the uh, equipment and the racking and so on. So that's the projected date, plus or minus a few days. Why, why the, I, I've got a question, and I'm just going to flat out ask you. Why okay. did you make the decision to move out of that building into Mays County to take the jobs? Uh, there are other uses for that building by the nation. Oh, the government. Okay, the government wanted the building and asked you to move. Yes. It wasn't you all wanting to move. That's true. Okay. Um, another one. Today, uh, Diane Kelly was over reporting career services about four classes that we're partnering with that she's been working with you and your group to partner with at the Botex okay. for our Cherokee citizens so they may be more ready to be employed and it'll make them eligible for entry level positions. And I want to know if all of these jobs, all these positions that we're going to do with the Votex, which is between 20 and 25, was the students, the recipients, whichever you want to call them, are they all going to be Cherokee that we're doing this for, or are they going to be non-natives? The plan is for them to be Cherokee, at least from our business perspective. I, Diane is here. I, I'm not sure about the details of those individuals, but I know our, our plans typically would be Cherokee only. Your plan is. Yes. Stuart, I hate it when people say that. I know what your plan is, but does that mean it's your understanding they're all going to be Cherokee? I mean, yes, I can make a plan and then two days well, later I, tell you it changed. I don't understand what Diane is doing. Oh, I, I know. know what we, we are Diane doing. didn't answer that. Okay. Yeah. So what we are doing is design uh, those, the day work programs, the interns are for Cherokees. 
Okay, another question. Have you all ever looked at a report on who hires churkeys? Uh, well, I'll tell you what, walk me through your hiring process. When you have a job opening and you set a panel in an interview on the different areas, different departments, who is ultimately responsible for saying, I want that person? Actually, it's the supervisor that would, uh, that individual would, to, would work for mm -hmm. because they're the one responsible for their department and their budget and their performance. Uh, we have added some process recently that would uh, provide an exception. If they're not going to hire Cherokee, then we have a group that would include uh, uh, top management that would uh, approve that. So if it's out of Cherokee hire, then there would be another process that we would go through to make sure that that decision was uh, properly evaluated. Okay, so as the supervisors are ultimately responsible, have you all ever run any reports on which supervisors hire the non-natives and by the same token maybe which ones hire the natives? No, we have not run that report, but I can tell you that each time a job comes up, that process is followed. Okay. So. Because I'm curious, just, uh, what I'm wanting to see I, is it the same person over and over, or is it one data point to be, you know, you know, I'd have to check. I'd have to check, but I mean, I think we would notice that if it happened, but we okay. we will check that. Okay, thank you. And um, I have about three or four more questions. Okay. Uh, how is hiring of the Turkey people weighted in the performance bonus? I know here a while back you talked about the bonuses, and yes. y'all just going to start waiting on the turkey hires. Well, you're testing my memory. <laughs> well, can you get it, it to is, me? Yes, I can get that for you. It is part of the evaluation process okay. and the bonus plan, but I'd have to get the exact yeah. numbers you, for you. You can get these to me in the coming weeks. The other thing is I've got a lot of questions from CNI wanting to know the bonus formula. So could you get that out to CNI Actually, and let them know? We had a management meeting today to roll that out to top, the top managers, and it will be rolled out so far as I believe. Monday or Tuesday of next week. I will have meetings with employees. Okay, and the last question somebody has called me about, did management receive bonuses this year? See any? I mean, not see bonuses. I'm stuck on bonuses raises this year already. Uh, yes, I believe they did. Okay. I'll talk to you about that during okay. the end. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Brad and then before Jordan. I just wanted to say, David, how many positive comments I hear um, up in Washington County about the Winona property, not only um, the jobs that have been created, um, the experience when going out there, and obviously that's just a, you know, that's not even the final property. And, uh, and then, Diane, your group, I, I've received many phone calls, uh, people that actually worked on that facility, and we're very pleased that uh, the nation didn't just talk the talk, that they actually hired Cherokees and other tribal citizens to work on that property. And, and they said it was kind of a refreshing uh, thing because they have, they've run into some other instances with other tribes that that wasn't the case. But uh, I received just glowing comments over and over about that Ramona property, and I'm excited about what's coming up with that property, too. So. Thank you. Thank you. Chris, Chris Province is a Cherokee that kind of came up through the ranks. I'm sure you've met Chris. He's doing a great job there. Ms. Glory Jordan? Yes, Mr. Stewart. We're losing 19 jobs, is that right, from Tahlequah to Pryor? No, that's actually not true. We've had discussions with uh, most of our employees. There are some that were still undecided about whether or not they're, they're going to move to the new facility. It's about 40, 40 five minutes drive, so uh, it is drivable. Uh, we've also made some pay adjustments for the change in location. So uh, there are a few that haven't decided yet. We took four employees to Stillwell so that they would not be displaced. So I think we have minimized uh, the number of uh, issues with regard to employees not having jobs. So we have four going to Stillwell. Mm -hmm. That leaves 15. How many definitely have said they'll make the move? You know, Councilor, I, I would have to go back. We talked about it today. I don't, I don't know the exact numbers. Uh, I believe there are only three or four left that we haven't made final determination of what their intention is. Can you get that information to me yes, uh, by email as quickly as possible? Yes. It, and it's my intention to see hopefully that you work with each one of those individuals to adjust their pay to compensate for what they're going to have to pay extra to get to work. And I, I hope that you are taking care of that, and I believe you will take care of that. 
but most of those jobs need some sort of adjustment given the amount that we're now paying for gas to get to our jobs, especially when those jobs were available here locally and they weren't having to drive that far. So I, I would like to follow, see a follow-up on that until we determine what all of those individuals are going to do. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Mr. Stewart. Thank you. Okay, next order of business is old business. There being none pending, we move on to new business. Madam Chair, I yes. forgot something if I can address you quickly. It was a follow-up to the Finch question about our fiscal management as part of my report, and I failed to expand upon the, the uh, Finch bond rating. The, the item that they discuss is about the, uh, I guess you would say, frugal and prudent management of the nation. And I think we see a part of that uh, philosophy expressed tonight in our budget modification because uh, for the public what we do is we close the books at the end of the fiscal year and then at this time of the year we when we close the books, we can reevaluate what money is left over for various reasons. We call that a carry forward. And so tonight, the council has the opportunity to take the administration's proposal and pass into law that budget modification that reflects that carry forward. And so what we've been able to do is increase our charitable contributions by 289,000, a public school re uh, outreach, 27,000, dentures and eyeglasses. 100,000 contract health care, another 900,000 of contingency reserve to prepare for the things like falling of the of, of casino uh, property, the close down of the budget to put in that contingency reserve, $4.7 million. Um, Self-help emergency assistance of 100,000, clothing for kids, which is dear to the heart of many on the council, another 100,000. Our rural fire departments, another 185,000 of, and one that we, I think we would all agree to, has been just an outstanding uh, program is our day training program. We'll be able to invest another $731,000 to that program. And even today, lining the halls at the of, of complex here, we had 50 to 60 people waiting in line to do day training. And so we'll be able to accomplish that. And I want to commend uh, Diane Kelly and her staff for uh, when times are tough and when times are lean to maintain and continue that program. It's been a great service to our people. Thank you. Uh, yes. Just a moment. Ms. Callan Watts, did you have a presentation? Yes, thank you, Madam Speaker. This award was given to the Cherokee Nation Chief Smith by the Uluga Area Chamber of Commerce uh, in recognition of our contribution the roads money that was able to repave the city streets of Ulagod. Of course, it's a town, so it's served by the county, and they would not have had their streets paved or widened without our money. And I was fortunate. I had conflicts, and our local community leader, Lee Keener, was able to accept this award on our behalf. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Madam Speaker. Okay. Um, by Smith and Community Services Committee, a uh, resolution was approved submitting an application for funding to the uh, Oklahoma Office of Juvenile Affairs for emergency youth shelter services. Mr. Buzzard. Yes. Uh, the purpose of this resolution is to renew a contract between Cherokee Nation and the Office of Juvenile Affairs for the John A. Ketcher Youth Service Center in the amount of $273,629. And this is with no match requirements, and I move for its approval. Second, Chair. Moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. The Out of Resource Committee, we have a um, resolution authorizing an ap uh, application to the EPA for a Cherokee led CERT program. Mr. Snell. Yes, this grant is for the amount of $75,000, with no match of funds required. I'll move approval. Thank you. Moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, um, Ms. Callan Watts, uh, items three through six, do you mind taking those in total? And I understand there's a correction on one of them. Yes. So 
Before we go to that, may I amend, offer to amend the agenda to include items 19 and 20 from resources sure. before that <coughs> goes further? Those are resolutions uh, for authorizing environmental programs to submit an application to U.S. Environmental Protection EPA for community air toxics funding, as well as the item 20 for uh, funding for the development of a Cherokee Nation pesticides management program. Mm -hmm. Moved and second to a move the agenda. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Thank you. Thank you. So items three through six with item, I have too many notes, item, there is a change on item six. Item six, thank you. And it is simply a title change and it should read a resolution to support the application DOE for renewable energy development and deployment in Indian Country program. And that's under program announcement DE-FOA-0000424 for the record. And I believe none of them require a match. So I approve items three through six in total with the amendment to the title to item six. Second the motion. Moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries in total. Okay, item seven is a resolution authorizing the Cherokee Nation to negotiate uh, and advertise for bid to lease travel units. Mr. Baker? Yes. Uh, it's that time again to uh, put uh, our trust and fee lands out uh, for uh, for lease and to negotiate those leases and it uh, this resolution has the authority to, to do the same. <coughs> I move for its approval. Second. 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 Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, Mr. Baker, you have items 8 and 9 also. We'll do those in, in total. Okay. Uh, first one, number 8, is uh, the resolution to uh, place in trust the Kirk property, or known as the Kirk pro property. It's 377 acres. Uh, and then also the second resolution is the hash property, and it's 54.92 acres. Put that in the form of a motion. Second. Okay. second. Any discussion on items 8 and 9? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. <coughs> Aries. Okay, item 10, this resolution authorizes the placement of the Acme Land and Trust. Mr. Anglin. Thank you, Madam. Uh, the purpose of this resolution is authorization of fee to trust acquisition applications on the, on the property referred to as the Acme and the Victory Cemetery in Collinsville. I would move for its approval. Second. It's about 48.23. Moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item 11, this resolution authorizes the placement of the Roland Truck Plaza Hotel Land and Trust. Mr. Thornton. Thank you, Madam Chair. <laughs> you appreciate welcome. that. Welcome. Since you've already read it, I'm going to make the most. Move to second. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Okay, item 12. <clears throat> it's a resolution confirming the nomination of Janie Dibble uh, on the Cherokee Nation Comprehensive Care Agency Board. Ms. Cal Watts. Thank you. Uh, is Ms. Dibble here today? I haven't seen her. Okay. Uh, so I make a motion to approve. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Oh, Mr. Yes. Baker. Will they also be sponsors since we need a sponsor for this? Ms. Cal Watts. Yes. All would you favor. like to join me, Councilman Baker? Yes, I will. Thank you. <laughs> All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, resolution, the item 13 is resolution confirming the nomination of Deborah Scott to the Cherokee Nation Community Association Board. Uh, Mr. Jack Baker. Yes, Deborah Scott is a member of, is a Cherokee Nation member and has been active in the Houston community Cherokees for many, many years. She's a member of our Constitutional Convention in 1999 
and I make a motion that you be approved as a board member of the Cherokee Nation Community Association Corporation. Second. 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 Discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. <coughs> motion carries. Okay, item 14, um, this is an amendment to the uh, uh, Fraternity Act, and uh, as presented in committee, there were several amendments discussed, and um, including confirming, uh, conforming with the federal definition of child support, a good cause allowance for deviation for the 60-month past due requirement, and brief and uh, birthing cost. Mr. Baker, would you? Move? Yes, I make a motion and be approved. Second. Second. Uh, this uh, in total. I mean, uh, by acclamation. By acclamation. <laughs> By acclamation, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, item 15 is a resolution uh, supporting the Adair State Park located in Stillwell, a request to the state for it to remain open. Ms. Hawk. Much like Mr. Thornton, I move for its approval. <laughs> second. Moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion <coughs> here. Okay, item 16 and 17. Mr. Thornton, do you want to read those? And I'm and not read those? You won't. <laughs> 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 yes, I do. Uh, this is resolution number 16 for support of uh, Lake Uchi State Park located in Delaware, <coughs> Oklahoma, and the request to the state of Oklahoma for it to remain open. 17 is a resolution in support of the Brushies Lake State Park located in Sequoia County, Oklahoma, and a request to the state of Oklahoma for it to remain open. Uh, I make a motion we'll pass these two. Second. 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 Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries for items. 16 and 17. I'm 18. Uh, this is an act covering Mod 6 to the 2011 fiscal year budget. Mr. Baker. Yes, thank you, Madam Speaker. This budget mod brings forth March grants of a million three hundred thousand. Most of them are from the Department of DHHS. We also have the carryover funds that our chief has alluded to, and named most of the items that were on there. There's one item that's included in that, which is the Cherokee Creativity Center, which is to, uh, to provide for an art incubator program. This, it's 234872 In other words, a grant received for this just before the mod was sent out to us, or right after the mod was sent out to us, excuse me. And if there's no objection, I would like to withdraw that and move those funds to the uh, uh, continuously reserve funds. Second. And second. Any discussion? Madam Speaker, I'd like to uh, make a motion. We have some uh, funding that's in the uh, Legislative Act 2910. has to do with the trial council budget. We've got approximately seventy-two thousand seven hundred and eighty-five dollars in that line. And I would like to make a motion that we uh, move that uh, into uh, the mod that um, we've got for contract health, dentures, and eyeglasses. Uh, last year's budget was about a million dollars, and then uh, while we're adding the hundred thousand to this budget. Um, I think anything we can do to try to get that closer to that million dollars for fiscal year uh, 2011 would be a good idea. So I make that in the form of motion. Second. Mm -hmm. Second. Ms. Fishing Hall. Yeah, um, this might actually relate to that. Um, Doug, could I ask for a CPA question? Doug, I'm looking at the uh, your notes from the budget mod, number 12, let's see, number 14, 19, and 20. I know for the last four years the treasurer's preached to us over and over and over. You do not fund new initiatives with carryover. I'm looking at 14. There's 100,000 there. It's a new initiative. I'm looking at 19. There's 250,000 there. It's a new initiative. And number 20 had oh, around 250,000, but we've done moved it to the contingency reserve. And 
I'm curious as to why we're suddenly funding new initiatives with carryover. Could you help me out here? Well, I think that question would be more properly asked to the administration. Uh, since I did, I only reviewed this request. Oh, you didn't talk to me about it. No. Okay. Allie, you want to come forward? This is something you have told us over and over in budget here. Right. Confused. And what I have uh, told you over and over again in budget hearings is, please do not budget carry over on recurring initiatives. Item number 14, yes, that is a new initiative, but it's a project. It is requesting $100,000 to upgrade our registration database. Uh, there have been many discussions in committee regarding the need to get um, a lot of the addresses updated. It's all in preparation for the 2013 election. Um, Item 19 goes hand in hand with the day work program that um, Ms. Kelly's shop administers. That is to basically expand that program a little bit to put more money into vocational education. Again, it's not adding overhead, it's not adding staffing, it's um, expanding an existing program. And what was the other one? <clears throat> Well, was the other one that was already pulled, but on 19, we're expanding yeah. an existing program? Well, we're, it is going to enhance the day training program by putting some money towards vocational education. So this isn't a recurring program. It's not going to happen next year. Comes if, if we don't have the funding, no. No, ma'am, it would not. This is one that's going to be, um, if we have the funding available, we will probably request it, assuming that it's as successful as the day training program has been. Madam Chair, let me Doug, address Doug, issue. I got a question for Doug real quick about what she just said. Doug, I mean, that kind of goes for any of our programs, isn't it? I mean, if we have the funding, they're going to be funded again. I mean, we could argue that. I'm confused is what I really am. Let me Can you help me out, Doug? Would you like the answer? We'll let Doug first, and then it's go an ahead. administration policy. The policy is recurring funds should a recurring expenses where we have an obligation Excuse to Excuse me, do. Madam Speaker. I don't mind listening to the Chief, but I'm asking my CPA a questions first and then after he finishes he can rebut or whatever he wants. Can't rebut here. Okay, then Doug. Doug, do you want to yield to the Chief or do you want to answer the question? Um, I am asking my CPA I would, a question. I would respectfully yield to the chief if I could have an opportunity to comment after here. Okay. The, the issue is recurring expenses. The greatest recurring expenses is employees, full-time employees, part-time employees. The principle is if we don't have an, a reasonable, intermediate, long-term expectation to, to fund those employees, we shouldn't do it. So when we talk about recurring income to recurring expenses, uh, if it's for construction, it's not a recurring expense. If it's for a program that can be terminated at its completion, it's not a recurring expense. The thing is we try to guard against is in uh, hiring people where we don't have money passed, foreseeably passed in the next fiscal year. And so what you see in each of these is an expansion for contracts, for vocational education, and not to include staffing expectations for after this year. So if it's a good program, we'll try to ex extend it, but it won't be dependent upon next year's funding because you don't have staff expenses tied up. Is that clear? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, Doug? <clears throat> Um, Council Warmer Fish and Hawk, we've, uh, we've been uh, evolved over years of budget uh, process to always focus on recurring versus non-recurring when it comes to funding as well as the, the uh, expenditures. Both Callie and myself have mentioned numerous yeah. times that it's always prudent to avoid recurring uh, programs, delivery programs, 
with non-recurring funding. Uh, you know, obviously, that's a risk. Uh, once those non-recurring funds run out, we've got to locate a permanent source for that. These three programs, in my, in my review, I did identify all three as new initiatives. And it's been identified that number 20, probably the one that applies to your concern more than any of the others, was funded by a federal grant and pulled out this mod. It does include, uh, I believe, recurring salaries. That's not an issue now due to the grant, the, the ICDBG award that we recently received. And had that grant been awarded before the mod submitted, it wouldn't have been included. The registration database is a, is a project. Specific project funds where we have an end in sight, we have a, we have a goal we're, we're trying to accomplish with those funds, um, those aren't recurring. Uh, hopefully the project's not recurring. Now the vocational work preparation, uh, number 19, I'll have to look at the actual budget on it. I, I don't believe it has salaries. Where we run into trouble is when we have full-time equivalent positions funded out of non-recurring dollars. Madam Speaker? Yes. I was presenting the budget mod, and I had not yet made a motion to approve the mod. Now, I know there was a motion that was made. I don't know if that was to amend the mod, or was it to approve the entire budget mod with that amendment? Ms. Town Watt, point of information, point of order. I believe you made the motion. No, I did not make a motion. I was explaining what I wanted to do. I don't know what he seconded before he made his yeah. amendment. Excuse me, Madam Speaker. Yes, if there wasn't a motion, then I had yet to second his motion. I understand that Jack is making a motion, so I'm going to second. No. You want to make a motion? Yes. I make a motion that the budget mod be approved. Mm -hmm. Second. Okay, now. With, with, with the 234000 taken out. Thank you. Okay, now we're in this. Second, Madam Speaker. So there's a second? Yes. Okay. Can we talk now? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, Doug, were you finished? Yeah. There are no salaries on that third budget. So of the new initiatives in the budget, there are no um, salaries funded out of it. Have you got which one? Those three. Okay. That all Ms. Fishing Hawk for now. Mr. Hoskin. Mr. Speaker, I withdraw. I was going to speak in response to uh, Councilman Soap's motion, but uh, I suppose that's premature at this point. Okay. Uh, Ms. Jordan. Has he made his motion for him? No. I'm premature, too. Yeah, I want to speak to it also. Thank you. Yeah, I got the floor. Yeah, Stephen. Now that we have a motion on uh, I would like to make a motion that we take the uh, funding for the Tribal Council, uh, $72,785, that was brought and forward in the mod and added to contract health services for ditchers and IRS. Second once again. She seconded it, okay? <laughs> okay, now, Mr. Hoskins. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, I, I think if what I'm understanding is correct, that the councilman would have us undo what we did in committee, which is to fulfill what we passed as a matter of law, which is that we would fund our community assistance program. I, I want to make. I guess I would pose a question to the councilman to make sure I understand the motion before I respond further. So, if I could, Madam Speaker, is that the councilman's intent to take the money that was, at least in committee, uh, designated for community assistance? Yes, that's my intent, councilor, to take this budget mod, take this funding that's in the uh, raw board budget modification, and uh, allocate it to contract health for venture contracts. Well, Madam Speaker, I thank the Councilman for his response. I, I looks like I understand it correctly. I think that 
we certainly need to fund contract health. We certainly need to do more. We needed to do more than the administration's budget had us do back in September, but we didn't do it. What, one of the things we did do is we passed a law which said that we would take some of the funds that we did not expend from our travel budget. And Madam Speaker, as you know, the funds that the Councilman's talking about are funds that we set aside for travel. To the extent we didn't use those funds, what we passed as a legal mandate, which is that we use those funds to help our communities. And we, we know story after story of how these dollars for community assistance has helped in our communities, has made a difference in the lives of family, of children, has created opportunity. And I think we need to fulfill that mandate. I think we need to stick to what we did in committee, make sure these funds get into this program because it goes for a good purpose. Now, certainly we're being made to make a choice between contract help, which we all find important, and community assistance. We can do both. It's actually a false choice, Madam Speaker. Now, here technically it is a choice, but it's a false choice to say that we have to choose between contract help and community assistance. We can do both. We should have done both both back in September when the administration set its budget priorities. Those priorities fell, fell woefully short of what we needed to do then. We don't need to have this false choice. We don't need to be fooled into taking this false choice now. We can do both. It's going to take some work. We need to fulfill that legal mandate to make sure we fully fund our community assistance. So I oppose the Councilman's motion. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Lori Jordan? Yes, I would like to offer a friendly amendment to Chris's motion. And that would be to fund the dentures and eyeglasses, which I too think are important, from the $234,872,000 that was just removed from this budget mod, which we have $5 million already in contingency. We were returning 234872 back to adding it to the contingency. And I would simply ask that we carve off uh, the 74000 plus and we take it from that area, continuing to fund our general assistance funds, as well as giving money to the much-needed dentures and eyeglass program. And... I second it. Well, we got oh, a fair amount of money. Okay, then I would like to put that in the form of a motion that we uh, reallocate those funds from the general assistance funds, which are provided for in a policy that we already have in existence, and take it from the $234,872 that we are returning to the contingency fund, thereby being able to do both needed things. The motion. Do I have a second? Do I have a second? I'll second. We've been second. Any further discussion, Ms. Cal Watts? I, I'm concerned. We're looking at what we need when we're faced with a federal budget shutdown, and we have so many programs and services. We're going to need as much cash flow set aside as possible. <coughs> I mean, at least for now. I mean, I would say we, that needs to be routinely something we do anyway. But even in the face of a federal shutdown, <coughs> crisis is imminent. And we have got to have cash flow in place. And right now, with that kind of carryover, we should not start delving into the rainy day funds in order to <coughs> try to, I guess it's just that time of year. So... Thank you. I'm not going to support that for amendment on the amendment to the uh, motion. Thank you. Mr. Baker? Yes. I mean, folks, the carryover is pretty much made up of dollars that were cut out for service to the people that weren't spent last year. We had an opportunity to budget for these things. We're sitting here making this big deal that, that we're bringing the carry forward and we're going to plug these holes that should have already been plugged. Uh, and maybe it is the silly season. But, you know, last month this body went out and, and gave themselves a raise. Now we're worried about printing money. Uh, we're talking about dentures and eyeglasses here. We're talking about money that we were spending for something else 
and we got a federal grant for it. So now we can plug the hole for dentures and eyeglasses. You know, some folks spent all of their travel. So they obviously don't have a, a skin in the game or a dog in the hunt. But some of us held it back because we knew it was going to be able to go to our services and our communities to help needed things that, uh, that occur. And uh, I mean, I'll, I'll take every dime that I've ever given to community, uh, community service and it plugged a lot of holes in, in <laughs> Cherokee County for a lot of people. And uh, I think, you know, if, to, to do away with it after we passed it and we agreed to it, and just because some folks squandered theirs, they don't care whether, uh, whether it goes to the community or not. Some people don't really use theirs for their community because I guess they don't get out in their community that much. But folks, we can fund it, and, and I'd almost make it a, a friendly amendment to go ahead and put the two, doll 234 in the and eyeglasses instead of just the 72. I'll second that. I'll accept it. And, uh, and the truth I'm is, sure. we can't make the chief spend it even if we put it there. How many motions we have on the floor? <laughs> I think we have three right now. <laughs> <clears throat> did you make did you make a friendly I did make a friendly to her. And, I, and you accepted it. <laughs> and the no. friendly was to put uh, the whole amount two thirty four two hundred and thirty four rather than seventy two. Instead of seventy two. And it would be a substitution for the method by which Chris wants to fund the dentures and eyeglasses. Leaving intact our general assistance money. We'd just be substituting other money for general assistance money in fact. Um, yes. I'm intrigued by the rhetoric here. This is that some people squandered their money in travel. This is not my money. This is the Cherokee Nation's money. Uh, no single one of us has an entitlement to leftover funds to hand out as we see fit as individuals within our, our community. A year and a half to two years ago, this body also passed legislation that did away with exactly that type of funding. Uh, those types of funds that were so um, amenable to being misused by individual counselors. And I think that Counselor Cobb at that time said it very eloquently. We have no right as individuals handing out tribal monies to anybody. And this, the, the fact that we have leftover, leftover amounts from these travel funds that we have used uh, has just ended up being a backdoor way to recreate what used to be called the slush fund. And so while we all agree with the, 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 the needs and the, uh, you know, the, the allocations into, into general services and so forth again, I think what Chris is, is proposing here and what I am supporting is that that be done as a body with those monies rather than going back to this old system that we had two years ago that we've already done away with uh, of individual counselors allocating these monies as they see fit individually, especially in an election season. This just lends itself too easily uh, to, to very, very improper uses of these monies. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Todd, did you have a comment? Uh, thank you, Madam uh, Speaker. Uh, first, uh, uh, to attempt to, to roadmap the parliamentary uh, procedures that we, we have here. Uh, under Robert's Rules of Order, you can only have two, two motions uh, 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 viable on the floor. The first motion at, uh, is the main motion, which, is to be, which was moved in section, is to pass the Mod 6. The second motion is was Councillor Soap's motion to modify that? Okay. Now you can't have an amendment to an amendment. Miss Mr. Baker's motion, or as as modified, can be a it should be a standalone amendment. Okay. So you would have to prior to voting for the main motion, you would take care of the of the amendments in its in its order. You would vote on Mr. 
soaks motion. Uh, depending on the outcome of the vote, it may render the second one moot, or technically, each one of these are a standalone motion. You could pass his and pass the other one. But the, but the fact is, is that we can't have an amendment to an amendment. So therefore, uh, it would be my advice that we consider Mr. Soap's motion, then Mr. Baker's motion. It was Mr. Baker's motion. Fine. Fine. Ms. Gloria Jordan's motion. Okay. So we are on Chris's motion. <laughs> just, just a point of clarification, make sure I understand. Todd, what you're saying is, regardless of what we do on Chris's motion, we can come on with my motion and substitute funds. Correct. Okay. Uh, Ms. Hoskins. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I respectfully disagree with Councilwoman Coates's characterization of the community assistance program. The fact of the matter is there's there's not been a single documented case of abuse of of community assistance. We had many debates on it. I, I conceded many times that we ought to have a system set up where we can apply some good scrutiny to it, but that it's a good program. There's not a documented case of abuse, but there's hundreds of documented cases where we've made a difference in the community. I also take issue with this characterization that we're somehow acting on the fly. I mean, I mean, these complaints about community assistance would have been good arguments to make back in September. Back in September, Madam Speaker, is when we put into place this policy, which has legal effect, this policy that says that unexpended travel funds will be used for community assistance. Now, we can have a debate about that, but we need to go back in time to September when we did have a discussion about it. And this body did approve that that would be the policy. We approved it. We just didn't fund it. <coughs> now we're carrying through with that policy. We're effectuating that policy with a small part of the funds that are available to us. Those funds were have really always been available to us because we appropriated them for travel, but we're just effectuating it tonight. So I really take issue, and I want the record clear, and I, I challenge anyone to take issue with this, that we set this policy in place back in September. We are not acting on the fly. We're simply putting the funds where we said they should go, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Madam Speaker, can I address, can I address the council, please? Just two brief points. One is that Thursday the United States government can close down again. And if you needed no other example of why you needed a contingency, that is it. Secondly, in response to Mr. Hoskins, <coughs> the principle here that I think we should be debating is if we do for one, we ought to do for all. We ought to be fair across the board. If we do for one social service project, everybody in that same class should be equally entitled. And that is not what happens with the general assistance fund or the slush fund as I've referred to it. Let me give you a good example. On Monday, April 4th, the treasurer uh, contacted our government relations group about a council donation check that had not been cashed from last year. This check was a donation made to the Cherokee Friends of Wayne, Wan, is that a, how you say that community? Wan community? W-A-A-N? Uh, Wan? Okay, Wan. I missed it when I was going through. Wan, this check was 90 days past, was past the 90 day validation period and the county must avoid it. A follow up call was made to the organization to ask about the check. The following was the discussion of that account. The Cherokee Friends of Wan, Juan, uh, spoke to a lady named Lindsay regarding this $500 check donation from Cherokee Nation. Lindsay said, there were a new organization at the time of the donation last September 2010. They really didn't have a need for the money and hadn't decided what to do with the donation. The organization does not have a bank account, nor have they set up an account for the organization. Therefore, she was holding the check and pending a decision for its use. Staff indicated the Cherokee Nation and County Department needed to void the check because it expired and become invalid. She said she would take the check to the bank on Tuesday and try to open a savings account with the $500 check. Tuesday afternoon, she contacted us back. Let us know the bank would not accept the check because it was outdated. She said she got a tax ID off the IRS website and opened an account for organization. She said uh, we advised that we'd reissue the check to the 
organizations, but uh, she said they do not have plans for the donation the check made, she made to the organization, but intends to deposit the reissued check when received. If we're going to do for one organization, we ought to do for all. If we were going to help with one livestock program, we ought to do for all. The idea of an ad hoc uh, d handing out of money by individual councilmen based upon what they perceive the needs of the Cherokee Nation is very, very poor policy. And this is one good example. Mr. Hoskins, I give you that example. If we're going to help friends of a town, it needs to be a cross-the-board policy that all friends of town, and there ought to be a Cherokee purpose for it, and there ought to be some accountability for it. And that is why I urge you to abandon this idea of a community service program that is administered by council members. We're still on Mr. So uh, Mr. Soap's motion here. Chris, you want to restate your motion? Uh, I'd just like to comment if you would uh, let me make one final statement. Could you restate your motion first? Uh, yes, my motion is to move the 72,000 $72, dollars from the tribal council line from the modification to the dentures and eyeglasses. I don't know if I believe that I listed in the mod. But, uh, that's the motion. I would also just like to just answer uh, Councilor Austin and say that, that even though that we brought this legislation forward, it, it didn't mean that it would be funded. Uh, point being that if every one of the tribal council members had uh, traveled and took trips to California or New York or uh, Wisconsin, Austin, Texas, wherever, um, you know, that money wouldn't have been there. It would have been a zero balance. So I just want to make that point. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Soap. Uh, Ms. Callum Watts. Thank you. Um, you know, there were several uh, disconcerting remarks for me. I struggled with the fact that we set aside travel monies because I believe part of our obligation as elected leadership of the tribe is to represent the tribe wherever we're called and asked to represent. Um, if I needed to give a, for example, if I needed to give a report on any of the work that I do um, out, outside of the Cherokee Nation when funded by our tribe to represent them, I could easily do that and account for my whereabouts almost every moment of the day. So in doing the work of the tribe, because I think some people on this council have forgotten that we have a federal relationship which requires us to be in D.C. And as much as I am proud of the chief and the deputy chief and their work, they are only two people that have 24 hours in a day and can only be so many places at once. And when President Obama came forward with the executive proclamation that we have tribal consultation, that increased our workload four and five times. And if other folks on this council would take some of the burden off of the staff and the chief and the deputy chief, maybe we would get even farther than we are today. But too many of the folks on this council refuse to ever represent in order to come home and say that they never spent a dime on travel or never did this and did that. Well, I am honored that I have the ability and that I have the respect of our staff and other folks and the chief that I would be asked to do any of the work that I do. So I am one of those people that have spent a significant amount of travel, but not over budget. I was within budget, and I had less than $2,000 left. I won't support the change because out in my community, the Will Rogers Memorial has been stricken by state budget cuts. So there was a number of things that were posed. I did not support this original move in committee, but it passed with a large number. So unfortunately, I thought the train was already down the tracks and at the depot, and unbeknownst to me, I didn't know about this motion tonight. So I won't support it because due to budget cuts, the memorial needs a water chiller or pump for their HVAC unit, which is right at the $1,800 that was left out of my travel. So I thought that would be a good use of that small amount of money because people always need dentures and they always need eyeglasses. But the memorial preserves a chair, one of our most famous Cherokees legacy and that is a very important item that would not be funded. They didn't know what they were going to do under the state budget cuts. And it creates tourism dollars and jobs so that people can fund their own eyeglasses and dentures, 
for the little $1,800. But I don't know about all the allusions to grandeur by some of the council people about how they do their job, but I go every day to try to figure out how I can better the Cherokee Nation as a whole and not just hand out money to a few people. And I actually, I resent some of the things said tonight, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Brendan? Thank you, Madam Speaker. I, uh, not sure where to begin. Um, but as some of them alluded to, back in September, we had a chance to put this carry uh, carryover funds uh, in our budget. You know, the budget was brought over to us, and it's, uh, as all of you are well aware, and we tried to change some of the items and uh, had a little success, but we didn't get all done that we needed to. Pardon? Fashion check. But now I see that, that we've seen, seen the light, so to speak, and we're putting some money back in some of these programs. Uh, the money was there all the time. Uh, it should have been in there to begin with. I hope, I hope our streaming video is working out there and people are really watching this. Uh, I haven't used the word squandered when, I, when I'm talking about travel money. I've been rather quiet and listened to this, but uh, I'd rather use the word some may over, have overspent. Uh, that's got a different meaning than squandered. But, uh, and health care has always been my number one priority. Uh, jobs are important. I mean, a lot of things are important. Housing. But health care has always been my priority. I would like to take more than 72 and change or whatever uh, Chris has mentioned and put in for dentures and eyeglasses. And there's money there to do that with. But on the other hand, as Chuck alluded to a while ago, this was, a, this was something that we passed. Uh, unexpended travel money was to be put in general assistance. And it, it sort of flies in the face of uh, the administration. Uh, and I think what it boils down to is whose idea it is and, and who's, who's getting to say how it gets spent. And uh, it's been my thoughts all along that we're the keepers of the purse, the council. We need to take that duty back and uh, and take care of budgets like we're supposed to. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Yeah. Madam Speaker? Yes. May I speak to just uh, one piece of, uh, I've heard it twice tonight, that we had the opportunity to budget these funds back in September. Point of order. Yes, Mr. Baker. She has no purpose debating at this, at this council. I, I, I don't want to debate. I, to Point of order. Okay. Sorry, Callie. Okay. Um, one more comment, Mr. Hoskin. Well, and three that, more comments, then that's all. I uh, appreciate the gentleman because I was going to yield to them because I I probably uh, hogged the airtime here, but uh, but I do feel passionate about community assistance. I think it's telling that the administration, with all of its resources that it can bring to bear could come up with one example in response to my claim that it couldn't name one example of, of abuse, and the example isn't even abuse. In fact, Madam Speaker, I think if we apply a little bit of scrutiny, which I intend to do, we'll find that the check actually shouldn't have gone to that organization, it should have gone to another. But we'll get down into those weeds later. But I think what I think is most demonstrated here is there's not been a single, a single substantiated claim of abuse. This comes down to power. This comes down to power. And the very small amount of money that we can bring to bear through community assistance is important and it's made a difference in people's lives. We're talking about a small amount of money and let the record show the chief has handed me a memo. Um, I think that we can do both. I think we can do dentures and eyeglasses and we can do this very small amount of targeted money for community assistance. We had the opportunity to have this debate back in September and what prevailed is that we'd have a policy of using unexpended travel for community assistance. I really think we should defeat Councilman Soap's uh, motion. Thank you, Minister. Mr. Thornton? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> I've been sitting here listening to this debate and thought I'd get my two cents worth in. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, uh, I had my teeth worked on today. And, uh, of course, I think that... Uh, Increasing dentures and eyeglasses would be helpful to our people, but uh, I haven't heard anything from my people in my district saying we need to, that the need isn't there. Usually when they bring a need forward, we'll go out and we'll say, okay, let's, let's 
raise the money here. Let's, let's hike it up a little bit. And and this uh, uh, withdrawal of this two hundred and thirty four thousand eight hundred and seventy two dollars, uh, I guess it wouldn't need it because we're withdrawing it. I don't know. I wasn't in that program. But I, I'd like to for bring forward a friendly amendment and I don't know if it yeah. probably wouldn't accept it or I can't or I can't. I right. can't. Todd can't amend an amendment. <laughs> a friendly amendment can be, uh, it can be accepted, accepted in what, and if it's yeah. it becomes yeah. the motion. Yeah. It has to be accepted by but the I'd, I doubt it's accepted and I doubt it's passed, but I, as a council person for my people in Sequoia County, would like to combine these two and put put $307,657 into a pilot program for hearing aids because we've got our elders that can't see some of them. I've got glasses on that are going to have to have teeth. We've never done anything for them health-wise for hearing aids. And if anyone has ever been where they can't hear, it's one of the worst things you can go through as an elder. Because I've had my mother get mad at me, I don't know how many times, because she misunderstood me. But uh, that would be my friendly amendment. I'd probably be turned down. So? You know, I appreciate the uh, friendly amendment. I really do, uh, Councilor Thornton. I just think that we need to vote on this separately. And uh, I think that would get uh, more feedback. Be consistent with uh, what is the need out there, the poor hearing aids. Um, again, uh, this uh, allocation is based upon information that we just found out uh, recently that uh, where uh, unexpected travel budget would be. And then uh, again, we recognize that the uh, compared funding for 2010 to 2011 is uh, a little bit short. So that's all. Thank you. Dr. Cobb? I'm going to try to articulate this since about half the time I don't do it very well, at least in my opinion. Um, I'm not inclined to vote for this, and I'll tell you why before you think I'm jumping on community service. I rely, I'm a big believer on, in letting the leaders of the groups do their job. And our job as a council is, is twofold, and I've said this over and over and over, is to make law and is to control the purse strings. <clears throat> and controlling the purse strings involves, at least in my mind, letting group leaders do their job. And one of the ways that, that at least I can do that is a budget is submitted. And I have to accept the fact that, that they didn't submit that budget randomly. There was some thought behind that budget. <clears throat> um, I am, with all due respect, I think adding money to eyeglasses and dentures, which I think is a great idea, I'm not necessarily against it, but it's done on the fly. Um, as chair of the health committee, I haven't had anybody in the health group tell me that they're way underfunded. Um, I rely on their budgets. So before somebody thinks that I'm voting no on this to add money to a community service, I think that's a discussion for another time. I think <clears throat> there are some discussions. I think, um, you know, several things that we can do with certain monies, but I am fiscally conservative. And especially in this economy and the way the budget is, not only at our budget, but the federal budget, I have to rely on group leaders to supply me a budget and I have to believe that they did that in good faith. So if we want to talk about 72000 somewhere else at a later time, I'm all for it. But I'm not going to vote for something and throw something somewhere on the fly. And as chair of the health committee, I was never, no one ever talked to me about eyeglasses and dentures. So um, I just want to be clear on why I'm voting no on this. Thank you. We'll take a vote on <coughs> Mr. Soap's amendment to, to add 72000 <coughs> I didn't see your hand, and I already put off the bait. Madam Speaker, I've had my hand up. 
Ina. Okay. Um, I think Brad said it quite well. None of us are against dentures and eyeglasses, but we've not been presented with a budget mod from hell that tells us that they even want more money for dentures and eyeglasses. We don't know where their budget is regarding dentures and eyeglasses. And it's no different than what the chief just uh, handed to uh, Councillor Hoskins. Apparently, those people might not have had a need for the $500. So until we get a request for dentures and eyeglasses to be increased, I think it's premature for us to vote to make this substitution of money. However, there has been, and I think already requests have been made for the need for the tribal funds that are going to fund the policy that we made last September. And I would encourage you with all respect to Councillor Soap that you vote no on Councillor Soap's motion. And depending on what you do on that motion, um, I will want to talk to you a little bit more about my motion that will follow. Thank you. Mr. Anglin, way down there. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't see your hand. That's fine. <laughs> down there, but I would like to yield some of my time to our comptroller. I would like to hear her her side of it that uh, she does. And, uh, Callie, well, you are you on her treasure? Yeah. <laughs> Callie, using to you. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to address several several times. I've heard that we had an opportunity to bring this carryover forward last September. To a degree, that is correct. That's the type of policy that led to the types of issues we had when I came to Cherokee Nation. Uh, point of, point so, of, this is not on the subject that we're getting ready to vote on. And I thought it was. She can I leave it with in. us about okay. this in committee. Uh -huh. And okay, then I would just like to uh, say that I fully support helping the Cherokee citizens. I think that is why we have group leaders and we have program staff. And as Dr. Cobb, I believe, said so eloquently, the council controls the purse strings and makes law. The executive branch executes those laws and executes the programs that are funded. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, this will be a roll call for Mr. Soap's motion for 72000 into dentures and eyeglasses. And where will that come from if this, if we vote yes? Mr. Soap, where did, I don't remember what you said. The uh, tribal council tried to carry on. So if we vote yes for this, then we do not fund our policy that we passed in September to use the excess travel funds for community assistance. It's my understanding. Is that your understanding, Mr. Soap? Um, that's about the uh, treasurer's answer, of course. Uh, Callie, I the What was the question? I believe they're asking where the money comes from, uh, treasurer. Um, 72000 The $72,000 came out of the big pot of carryover, and it's uh, specifically uh, unspent travel money out of the tribal council's operating budget from last year. And so a vote of no on Mr. Soap's motion then leaves our budget mod intact as is. Is that correct? Understand. Okay. Thank you. All mine's clear? Okay. All in favor? No. Roll call, Shelley. John Garvin? Yes. Chuck Hoskin Jr.? No. Anna Gloria Jordan? No. Chris Bell? Yes. Curtis Snell? Excellent. David Thornton? No. Eric Allen Watt? No. Bill Anglin? Yes. Bill John Baker? No. Jack Baker? Yes. Carly Buzzard? Yes. Julia Kep? Yes. Bradley Cobb? No. Joe Crittenden? No. Jody Fishinghop? No. Meredith Fraley? Yes. Janelle Fulbright? 
So. We have seven yes, nine nay, and one abstention. Seven yes, nine no, and one abstention. So, Mr. so the motion fails. Now, Ms. Laura Jordan. Uh, Madam Speaker, because I do feel very strongly about what uh, Councillor Cobb just said, that there needs to be a proposed need, I would ask that I, I would withdraw my motion in favor of waiting till the health committee uh, so that we can find out from our group leader uh, if the need exists to add money. And if it does, well, then I'll be bringing forth that motion at that time. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Baker? So is yours. you have any okay. more? No, I have no other comments other than call for the question of voting on the budget mod. Question is being called to vote on the budget mod. You want that? By acclamation. By acclamation. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Okay. okay, item 19 is a resolution covering the submission of a grant application for EPA. Uh, for community air toxic funding. Madam Speaker, I would ask that both 19 and 20 be submitted in total. One is for 350000 and one is for 100000 Neither have a match Second. required. Second, any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Now, uh, announcement. I notice we have some council candidates in the audience. Would you like to stand and introduce yourself? Hello. <laughs> I'm Pamela Iron, and I'm the executive director of the National Health Research Council. I'm a candidate for District 1, Big 3. Good evening. I'm Pamela Iron, and I'm the executive director of the National Health Research Council. Good evening. My name is Gary Stop. I'm a council and candidate for District 1, Big 3. Powerful. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. I'm Lee Peter, uh, ranker of the five, Colson Rogers County, C3. I'm Jack McQuarrie, I'm ranking for District 1, C3. Ms. Hathcote? I'm Kelly Hathcote, and I'm ready for Deputy Chief of the Church of the Nation. Glad to have them. Love you. Any further announcements, Mr. Garvin? I want to introduce two of my friends from poor home of Bell Star, Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> I'll Barbara and Dixie. I'm going to tell her. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, it's been brought to my attention. I believe we have a, a young councilwoman um, that we have not met, maybe. Savannah, in a, is it Gissinger? Gissinger? And you're at the at large uh, youth tribal council, leadership council rep? Welcome. And hey, oh, Ms. Coates. Uh, just for all of those who are web streaming, the picnics in uh, Central and Northern California will be taking place in Bakersfield on April 30th, and at Sassoon City uh, in the San Francisco Bay Area on May 1st. So everybody out there in Northern and Central California, please come out. Thank you. Entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. 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 Second.